this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to replace the motor belt on a vintage Singer sewing machine that has an external rear mounted motor. This particular machine is Stella, a model 237, but there are several models of Singer machines and probably other manufacturers that this procedure would um, be the same. For, for this model 237, um, I'm thinking this is the original belt. It is a Singer belt that's marked Singer and uh, it has the uh, part number, Singer part number of 193066. Um, and Really, the belt is pliable and usable, but uh, when I get it off here, I'll show you why I want to change it. So on these machines, the motor um, here is mounted to a motor mount that is just uh, screwed or bolted right into the back of the machine below the hand wheel. And to get the belt off, you simply loosen this screw or bolt here that holds the motor mount. You can use a large screwdriver and in this case you could also use a uh, 11 millimeter socket or 7, 7 16 inch socket. And you don't have to you don't have to take this all the way out. You just have to uh, loosen it so that the motor mount can slide up and down on it. See that? See how? And then to get the belt off, we're going to slip slip the mount up on the screen so we raise the pulley and then the belt will just slip right off of the pulley. Mm -hmm. Now on this type of an open uh, wheel, hand wheel, then you can just slip the belt right over the top of the hand wheel, just like that. Or if you prefer to think about it, off the uh, side or off the bottom. <laughs> and uh, this is a very strong, well-made belt. Um, and it says right here, a Singer um, 193066. And like I said, it is pliable. It's not uh, cut or torn. There is some wear on the fringes up here. But it's, like I said, it's still a strong belt. Um, now, if you have um, a different model that uh, has a bobbin winder up in this area that blocks the belt, or the cover of the machine blocks the belt. Usually the arm cover is held on by one, uh, by two or three screws. You can loosen the screws like I did on Stella here and just lift off the arm cover. And if you need to, you can always take off the hand wheel. Now there's a little uh, stop set screw here that I, I already took out. Let me put it back in there just for a second and I'll show you uh, what it what it looks like here well it, let me just show it to you here okay this is just a little chrome stop screw you remove it and then holding the outer hand wheel you turn the stop motion screw to the left and you'll take it off and behind it is a stop motion washer now these can be heavy, so don't let them drop on your machine or furniture. And there's the stop motion washer. Once you have the, the screw and the washer off, the hand wheel is just going to pull straight towards you and come right off of the end of the horizontal arm. And then you could take the hand wheel off. So there, there, there's a few models you have to do this to get the belt off actually take the hand wheel off and slip off the belt. Now that I've got the belt off, I'm going to show you why um, I want to change it. 
it's it's a little bit on the wide side for the V groove in the hand belt and the motor pulley. It doesn't really sit down and maybe that's a that's a good way to see it right there. Let me pull it let me pull it tighter. But it it uh, sits up a little high in the V groove and the upper sides of this belt are rubbing along those sides of the V. Let me turn the belt inside out and then you can see why if you don't know what a V belt is this will show you. Ooh, it's, it's, this is a very tough well-made belt like I said. I mean this could be on a car to run the uh, alternator or, or something. But if you can see there it's a flat V. The part here that should go onto the bottom of a V in the hand wheel is flat and then it spreads out towards the top. And the groove is made that way of course so that it it sits in there like that and gets good traction. But it's a little bit wide. This I measured this and I'm getting 5 sixteenths of an inch wide. And to me the belt should be a 4 sixteenths inch wide and sit down farther in the groove. And if you see all of this uh, right here and you see all these black markings inside here, that is all from the way this belt sits in the V-groove and um, rubs off there and kind of deteriorates and it's lightly shredding the sides of the belt. So if I take a look, let me turn around here so you can see the motor better. If I take a look at the, see if I can get another, get another light over here. If I get a good look at this uh, V belt, I mean the the pulley. See, it's also in a V shape. Same thing for for the motor belt, and this is not cogged, and the hand wheel is not cogged. Um, so the belt is not cogged. You see a lot of cogged belts nowadays. Um, and if you if you have cogs on the pulley or the hand wheel, you should get a cogged belt. But you don't see that many of those. Um, I think the cogged belts are just like the new universal belt, and I think they just make them that way to save money mostly. But I I have the same thing here in this. Um, pulley, you see the belt, it's like it's too wide for the pulley. So it kind of rides right up on the edges of it. And when I got this machine, this whole area is all black too from kind of wearing off the sides of the belt. So even though the belt itself is in good condition, I wanted to find a belt that fit down in the groove of the pulley and down in the groove of the uh, hand wheel better. So I, I looked around for that part number and I found a few sellers that sell that belt and some of them list the width of the belt. Most of them with, list the length 15 and 3 quarter inches. Um, so I, I contacted them if they had their own store by email and uh, the sellers on eBay, you know, I contacted through eBay and asked them to please give me a measurement on the belt. And there were a couple that sell a quarter inch wide belt. Um, that, and, and it's the same part number, right? It's just slightly, uh, I would call it, um, a quarter inch or four sixteenths or maybe seven thirty seconds wide where the original belt that was on there was just a little bit wider. So of the two sellers, um, one um, happens to be 
a, a seller that I've purchased item sewing items from many times and this store is called Louis Love Bug. And I'll I'll put a link to this belt that I bought. Um it was under nine dollars and uh, he offered a discount, you know, it's uh, it was a little bit, I don't know, say eight forty for one, um, eight thirty each if you buy two and so forth. But I I I bought two um, because it's a popular size belt that also works on other models. But he, he uh, readily told me the size of the belt, you know, and I said, great, that's the belt, that's the one I want. Okay, so anyway, I I got it here. And uh, let me slip it on here just while the belt is here. And I'm, I'm hoping you can see it fits down in there perfect. I mean, it's snug, and you're going to get traction from the sides of the V as well as from, um, from the bottom. And um, it's the same thing over here on the motor pulley especially where it sits right down snug into the into the pulley nice nice fit in the pulley not kind of riding on the edges i hope i'm making sense when i describe that where where this one you know just kind of rode up on the edges of the pulley and it really didn't seat down inside all the way of the hand wheel. So let's uh, let's put this uh, hand wheel back on, and then I can I can uh, get the belt back on and show you how to set the tension. Now, if you had to take the hand wheel off to get your belt off, of course you're going to want to slip the belt in there before you put it on. I wouldn't have to do that. So I'm just going to leave it off for a minute. You slide the the hand wheel back onto the end of the arm shaft and then uh, let's find my stop motion clamp. You have a 50-50 chance of putting this on the correct way so it will work in conjunction with the stop motion stop screw that goes in here because when the screw is in there and you partially loosen it to wind the bottom the stop screw is going to stop on one of these three tabs that stick out that's why it's called the stop screw and if you put it on the right way which is, and this, and this is true of all these machines that have this, when you tighten this up, you want the hole to be between any of the tabs, but kind of like halfway or so between two tabs, right? So it could stop, it could stop here, right? Or it could stop there, or, or it could stop here when you, when you tighten it. So that when you go to loosen it, that little eighth of a turn, the stop screw stops on the tab, but you relieve enough pressure of this clamping system that the hand wheel will turn by the motor belt, but the arm won't turn, and therefore your needle bar and your feed system won't be in use while you wind the bobbin. That's what the whole stop motion thing is for. So let's see if I can carefully put this on here without knocking the clamp off. That's, that's a very common problem I have and other people is when you're putting this on, you knock this uh, clamp washer off of there. So just gently get it on here and let's see where I stop. 
Okay, so my 50-50, I was the loser this time because when I look when I look back here, here is my screw hole, and when I look right behind it is one of the tabs. So it's not going to work. So before I bother to put the screw in and find out, I will just redo it and turn it 180 degrees from how I had it. Where before I had the twin ears up, and the single ear down, I, I turned it 180 degrees, and now it should work. So we'll find out. I'll put this back on carefully. If you do knock that washer loose while you're doing this, you, you have to take the chrome stop motion screw out and put that um, wash, that clamp washer back up on the cutouts in the arm. You can't just have that washer flopping around behind here. Now let's see if I can get it properly this time again. Oh, I did it pretty good the first time. Yeah, I usually try turning it a half turn back to seat the threads. No, nope. See, I knocked I knocked this loose, so I'm going to start over. Put that up at the top. Now, some people, when they take this off, they take this apart. They do it very carefully, and they'll mark, like with a felt pen, they'll mark one of the the arm and they'll mark the tab next to it so a little like a little black felt pen marking each piece so when they put it on they say oh I have to put this tab by by that cutout mark and I just I've never done that I just kind of take my chance and uh, half the time I get it right and half the time I get it wrong now let's try it again okay so now, here's my screw hole, right? And when I peek in from the side, I see one tab is here and one tab is up here. So that is that is what I want, right? Okay, I finally found a... I, I have these little magnetic uh, trays that I put those kind of things in and I, I forgot which one I put it in. <laughs> I didn't put it in the one with my little screwdriver, but I have it in place now, and I'll tighten it in. It just goes in all the way, and uh, this is what I would have taken out to remove the stop motion screw. So to to set the machine to sew, you hold this or you hold the hand wheel and you turn this to the right like you're tightening it right and then that clamps the the clamp and to the to the arm so now when the hand wheel moves you can see the needle bars going up and down and I can also see that the feed dog is moving properly then when I want to stop the motion to wind a bobbin, I'll hold the hand wheel and turn that left. And you hear it stop. Right? Because the little screw is hitting one of those tabs. Now the motor and the motor belt can turn the hand wheel but now you see that the needle is not going up and down and the feed dog is not moving. Okay, so I might as well tighten that back up here. Get the clamp. I will put my new belt over the hand wheel and fit it nicely into the groove. And it fits so nice. And now to get 
the belt onto the motor. It's very easy. Just support up the motor again. Just raise it up on your loose mounting screw. Right? Now the belt can easily slip over the pulley. Now you want to lower it back down. Okay? And if you have this nice and loose, and you have it lined up um, straight, you don't want it um, crooked, just nice and lined up straight. Usually the weight of the motor is the tension you want on the belt. So you don't need to push the motor down hard and tighten this, but I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you what, what happens if the belt has too much tension. So instead of, uh, let's get this, yeah, instead of just letting the, the motor kind of come down here and rest on the belt, I'm going to force it down more, and then I'm going to tighten this uh, sc screw, okay, I see I, I, that, that's a pretty, pretty tight belt. So let's run it here and see what happens. Okay, now I have the pedal completely depressed, and that's the speed I'm getting, which, which I know this is binding the belt and the motor. So it's way too tight. So let me loosen it back up right and then I'll get the bracket free again get it get it lined up nice and I'll just let it slide down and let the weight of the motor which is pretty heavy the motor and the bracket let that determine the belt tension now, if you see, it's uh, not as much here, okay? So you want your belt tight enough so it doesn't uh, slip on the pulley or slip on the hand wheel. But you don't want it so tight that it binds the operation of the machine. So you, you have to play with it a little bit. Pick what you think feels good. Say, okay, that's that's about this much play. Maybe the belt deflects a quarter inch in. Hmm, whatever. And then, oops, still a little, still a little loose here on that bracket. So let me tighten that up. Didn't have it. The, I didn't have the bracket sitting flat against the housing of the machine. Now it's tight. Oh, I see that tightened it back up a little bit. So I'll loose it, raise it up. Yeah, I'll go back to letting the motor wait. Some of these are very easy, and this is like a, a hinge screw, and you can put the screw in and just kind of rip drop the motor down and tighten it <clears throat> this bracket slides up and down it's not on a hinge so you have to kind of be sure your bracket is pushed against the machine that's where I went wrong if I just let the motor so heavy in the back it tilts the bracket away from the machine at the bottom see that so this time I'll make sure my bracket's flat against the machine. Mm -hmm. And I'll try it again. Now some people have mark, tried marking where this screw sits. You know, like right here in the middle of the bolt. I'm going to put a little mark and then when I put it back, I'll put it back there. But if, you're, if your old belt has stretched and somebody tightened it, and you put the bracket in the same place, your new belt is not going to be stretched and it might be tighter. Okay, so I've got 
easy deflection there. I've got it in the groove of my hand wheel. You always want to check that, that it didn't pop out of there somehow. I've got it into the V groove of my pulley. My motor's nice and tight, my motor mount. Let's try this again. That, that feels a lot better. Almost a little loose, maybe. Can you see how the belt is jumping a little here? Almost, yeah, a little loose because when I stop the hand wheel, the pulley can still kind of slip around on the belt. See, I can still see my pulleys turning a little. So I need to snug it up, I think, just a little bit more tension than that. Okay. That's about halfway between the two tension settings. My first one I pushed down on the motor and purposely made it too tight. My second setting was a little bit loose. Let's try this one. Now when I stop it, it's the pulley doesn't slip so I'd say that's a pretty good uh, compromise the belt is on there secure it's not so tight that it's binding the machine I think I can reach full speed but it's not too loose and slipping a little let's get it in straight and let's go to a long stitch I think we're done. Now, don't be surprised if you do put a new belt on there and, and you sew quite a bit, you know. Let's let's say you, you sew four or five hours a week. You know, after about a month, this belt may stretch out a little tiny bit as it, it warms up, it gets used to the temperature in your uh, sewing area, you, you're using it, so it might uh, stretch out just a little bit and seem a little bit loose no big deal now you know just loosen this and raise or lower the whole motor and bracket up or down to change the tension on the motor belt and let's see I'm going to just go ahead and make sure I got this nice and tight and that's it. So on the 237, Stella, you got your new belt, Stella. Uh, and you see how easy that is. Wow, don't, don't pay a, a, a store to change a motor belt like this. There's internal belts and clogged belts and stuff that are a lot more difficult. But on, on, a, on a machine like this with a external belt or where you take off a little housing and you see this right inside the housing the chances are almost a hundred percent you can do it yourself okay so thanks for um, watching watching this remember this is can be on a lot of other models this method and this even this particular belt fits six or seven models and uh, I will put in the um, description below the video a link to Louis Love Bug on eBay where I bought the belt. He's a trusted seller for me and his price was good and he's always uh, responded well to my questions when I have a part or specific uh, thing like that. Good service from from him. Take care. See you next time.